Adich, the Serbian president, thank you very much for being with us today. Thanks a lot. Now, Mr. President, it's been two years since Kosovo's independence was recognized, and back then there was a lot of talk about the domino effect, about the threat of destabilization in the region, and then none of that happened. Why do you think, was it right to make such a fuss in the first place, in the beginning? No, the domino effect is uh, still existing as a threat for everybody, not only in the region of Southeast Europe, but also everywhere. And uh, from that reason, uh, I have real concerns. But uh, taking into the consideration how we reacted to the, on the unilateral declaration of independence, uh, I think that we are trying to prevent problems. Uh, I mean, Serbia has a consistent policy. That means we are totally against partition of all countries that are member states of United Nations. Uh, that means we are against partition of the countries that are, that are existing in the region. In that respect, we are fully supporting, for example, Bosnian integrity, integrity of other countries. Uh, and uh, in that respect, we are contributing to the stability, even though we are very much affected because of unilateral declaration of independence. Now, just recently, Kosovo's prime minister suggested starting relations from scratch with Belgrade. Is that possible? I mean, what would it take for Serbia to actually agree think, to a dialogue? I think the dialogue is a very important. Dialogue uh, can bring some solution. I mean, we have a confrontation between Serbs and Albanians, not between Serbia and Kosovo, because we don't recognize Kosovo independence. We have a confrontation between Serbs and Albanians for uh, almost uh, 150 years. And on the end of the day, we have to solve that kind of conflict. The conflicts are blocking not only Serb Serbs and Albanians, but also whole region in terms of progress and development. Only through dialogue we can achieve some solution that can be acceptable for Pristina and Belgrade. So the British Foreign Minister William Hague said that Serbia is actually putting its chances of joining the EU under threat by refusing to cooperate with Kosovo. Um, you are facing a really tough choice. What's your priority? Kosovo or the EU membership? Oh, I'm not um, making that kind of uh, differences. Uh, I have been uh, uh, participating on elections last time, and uh, the first time when I was uh, elected for president of Serbia, having in mind uh, two main strategic goals, to become a member state of European Union and to defend territorial integrity and sovereignty of my country. I'm going to continue my efforts in that direction. Well, in 2008, in every single one of your interviews, you said that 70% of your people, of Serbs, thought that Kosovo was the main problem, the major problem in the country. And like a year later, this number dropped to 6%. Why is that? I mean, uh, if we are talking about people that are uh, mentioning Kosovo as a main problem of the country, there are different opinion polls in the past few years. You have to know that Serbia is very much affected because of economical crisis and in that respect uh, all Serbian people and the citizens are thinking that uh, economic crisis, uh, unemployment and that kind of problems are on the top of our agenda and this is a totally true. Without a strong economy and the real development you cannot defend your state and the national interest. And uh, that is why we are trying to solve the problems like all other countries all around the world. But uh, people are not thinking that Kosovo is a not problem anymore. Kosovo is existing and a problem not only between Serbs and Albanians, but also in regional policy, globally thinking, because of having in mind a real possible precedent that, that can uh, create many, many turmoils all around the world. You're absolutely right. The UN International Court of Justice in The Hague recognized the legitimacy of Kosovo's independence, and this is a first precedent. Now, in relation to that, what do you think are the consequences for some other European countries? The decision of the International Court of Justice has uh, been legitimizing the unilateral declaration of independence, not independence of Kosovo. Uh, having in mind that a uh, group of the people that declared the unilateral independence didn't have a rights to do that, taking into the consideration all legal framework which was adopted on Kosovo before. And uh, that is very controversial decision, but we are, we are not going to interfere in decisions of International Court of Justice. We accepted that and we are going to continue our efforts uh, in, in direction to, to defend territorial integrity and sovereignty of Serbia. But that cannot be uh, really uh, achieved 
uh, uh, without dialogue between Serbs and Albanians, between Pristina and Belgrade, and we have to have uh, some kind of compromise on the end of the day. Solution is not the one side that means Kosovo Albanians getting everything, and the other Serbia and Ser Serbian people are losing everything. I'm totally sure that we have to have uh, some compromise. Despite the urging of the European Parliament to recognize Kosovo's independence, there's Spain, there's Greece, there's Romania. They refuse to do so. Do you think it's more because? their uh, apprehensions about their own intentions or it's just solidarity? No, 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 no. Uh, all, uh, all governments all around the world are defending their own interests. And not only those three countries but also Cyprus and Greece. And uh, I appreciate very much that kind of uh, approach uh, because that was very helpful regarding Serbian position. But those governments are defending interests of their citizens and their national interests. And we understand that very well. We understand that perfectly. Now, you have always strongly promoted the pro-American image of your government. And then when the Kosovo issue emerged, when it came down to it, it turned out that Russia was your only ally, true ally. How did that happen? I'm pro-Serbian. Uh, President, uh, this government is going to be always, if I'm going to be leader of this country, I'm sure that I'm going to continue my, my work uh, pro-Serbian government. And we want to have the best possible relations with the United States, even though we are facing with the real challenges, especially because of Kosovo. That is a crucial, important achievement in my talks with the Vice President Biden and uh, Madam Clinton. The, sh she came to Belgrade, and we agreed that we disagree on Kosovo issue. And this is not very easy to achieve that kind of uh, relations in the very difficult circumstances in which we are living. Uh, second, we do not want to become member state of United States. We want to become member the state of European Union. We are living in Europe and we are going to continue our efforts in that direction. But no one can make uh, very strange and artificial conditions in terms of recognizing Kosovo uh, because of uh, our intention to become member state of European Union. And I appreciate that, that approach of European Union countries very much. Take into the consideration our relations with the Russia, historical relations, very close relations and the cultural relations. No one can uh, make any problem in that respect. This is not a changeable policy and be sure that Serbia is going to be very, very close partner of Russia to future and uh, future history. And we should have continue to have special relations? Of course, I have extremely close relations with your president and your prime minister. We have a very, very good conversation. We agreed on many, many issues uh, and we're going to continue our efforts in that direction. So this is a quote from your interview. The Balkan integration into the EU is the only way to settle the disputes and we should all be integrated into Europe and look for pragmatic ways out simultaneously. Now, why do you think it's possible to settle the is issue that one country couldn't solve on its own within the EU boundaries? Only through dialogue we can solve the problem that is not affecting only Serbs and Albanians, only Serbia, but also whole region. And I think that is becoming globally extremely important issue. And that is the reason that only 60 countries recognize Kosovo independence until today. Uh, we have uh, more than 190 countries that are, that are member states of uh, United Nations. And is, this is also a fact that we have to take into consideration. So the ultra-right movements are gathering pace in Europe. Now, under these conditions, how do you see settling the problem of living side by side with Muslims in your country? I mean, the, the religious issue is a very, very important issue. Uh, Muslims are Bosniaks, uh, Bosniak people that have a Muslim religion are living in Serbia for centuries. And I appreciate very much the uh, achievement of uh, Muslim and Bosniak culture in my country and uh, in the regional policy. In that respect, we are fully uh, respecting uh, all rights for all religious communities, all national minorities, and we are going to continue that kind of policy. Europe is a phase with a, with a problem, with a challenge, how to define themselves uh, in terms of influence of the Muslim culture on European continent. And uh, that is dialogue between Turkey and Europe. Uh, we are not a very strong country and we cannot decide uh, what has to be European policy in that direction. Europe have, have to decide uh, where are the borders of European Union, and uh, how to, uh, to, 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 to handle uh, many differences that exist in between Christians and Muslims. But uh, if you want my opinion, I, I'm more insisting on uh, uh, extreme religious groups that, are, that, that we have in all uh, religious uh, right now, not only among the Muslims, but also among the Christians. I'm facing uh, as a Serbian president with the, with the radicals that are 
that are uh, very, very often insisting on the Christian identity, but very strong and very extreme religious uh, organizations are becoming uh, problems everywhere. Uh, on the globe. Sir, the Serbian government did its utmost to hand Karadzic to the Hague. What's your assessment of this process? We have to continue that, that, uh, that process. First of all, this is our law. This is in accordance with our legislation. We are respecting our laws. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll be in a very difficult situation. And second, in terms of reconciliation, everyone who is accused has to be in the Hague Tribunal. Uh, I'm not uh, talking about Serbs, Croats, Bosniaks, Albanians, but because of war and terrible ho consequences we are facing with, uh, the only way is in terms of reconciliation that uh, people that are really accused because of participation in war crimes during the 1990s has to be faced with the justice in the Hague Tribunal. Well, then, two years ago, when Ramush Haradine was acquitted of all charges, you said the Hague Tribunal's decision uh, was a major blow to the whole international justice system and also to the hopes of Balkans for reconciliation. Does this mean that you considered it biased and incompetent? That was a really very tough uh, momentum for Serbs and Serbia. And for me, as a Serbian president, uh, uh, fortunately, there is a continuing of that process against uh, Mr. Haradini right now, and uh, right now he's in the tr Hague Tribunal once again. And the Human Rights Watch, this is a human rights organization, demanded that you put pressure on Serbia to actually make the search for Goran Hadzic and Radko Mladic more effective. What do you say to that? Well, I, I'm not changing my, my, my approach, and uh, everyone who is a uh, in the IT has to be in the Hague Tribunal. That is a very strict and not changeable policy. Mr. President, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks.